Hi everyone, it's Nini. Welcome to my channel. I'm putting on some makeup to film a true crime video. There's been some things that I wanted to chat about. Yes, hello Walter. Let's just get into it. It's been a little bit since I last filmed a true crime video. I just got busy with some other things. And I know they say that you should dedicate your channel to just one topic, but I like a variety of things, so I don't want to limit myself. I like doing true crime. I love doing my makeup videos. So even though they don't get the views, I enjoy it. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. I don't know if you can tell anymore, but I lost some of my eyebrows when I took off my Vecna makeup. If you put liquid latex on here, it is gonna rip it out. No! Kelly Clarkson! I had liquid latex on there, but I blocked down my eyebrows with glue, and I do several layers to try to protect it, but this is the second time that the glue didn't quite protect me. They've grown back a little bit already, but it was kind of funny. It didn't look horrible though. It could have been a whole lot worse. Hair is something I don't freak out about. If you get a bad haircut, it'll grow out. If you get a bad dye job, it'll wash out. I probably picked a bad time to get back into true crime because it is a busy time of year with face painting. Nobody's forcing me to do the face paint, but I enjoy it and it's a good time to post it because, you know, tis the season. <laughs> the last two years in a row, I have done 31 days of Halloween looks. You post a look every day of the month on Instagram, which is fun. It takes a lot of work. Like I usually would start that like end of June, but I already knew at the end of last year that I wasn't going to do 31 again. It just takes so much time. Then life hit me really hard after that. So I'm like, I knew this year. I'm like, there's no way I'm doing 31 days. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna put pressure on myself. If I do like five to seven, that's good enough. <laughs> I'm a dummy who planned two vacations during my busiest time of the year, but both vacations require being outside and I love being outdoors. I absolutely love it, but I'm also a sweaty bitch. Since these will both involve being outdoors, I wanna at least be comfortable. So I'm like, well, I'll do them in the fall when it's a little bit cooler. I took my youngest niece and then my nephew to the Omaha Zoo a couple weeks ago. And then next weekend, I'm taking my oldest niece to the Denver Zoo. If you're curious what palette I'm using, it's the Dirty Martini palette by Glamlight. At the start of this year when I was drunk most of the time because that was how I dealt with grief. You know, there's drunk texting, but then there's drunk online shopping and I do that all the time. And so I bought a bunch of eyeshadow palettes and this was one of them. Speaking of grief and losing people, I got new ink. It is my dad's signature from a birthday card. A flower is an alfalfa plant, which we had on the farm growing up and I cried during it. <laughs> I'm a crier though. I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. I cry at commercials. So I did tear up, especially when she got to the love dad part. Just three months after my dad died, my dog died. So I'll be getting her name tattooed on my foot. I already have my other dog's name down there. So I'm just going to add her name to it. I don't want to get another dog yet. I thought I would by now because I love dogs. Love dogs. My heart's not ready. And I really didn't think getting a cat that I would get like super attached to a cat. Cause like dogs are companions. Like my dog went everywhere with me. But holy crap, I have gotten attached to Walter. He is my little man. I said to my sister though, I said, I wonder if the local animal shelter would let me just play with the dogs. Then I can kind of get my dog fix. She sent me a link to their specific volunteer opportunities. And one of them was dog walking. So I filled out the application, went in for some training for that. And I told the gal, I said, time commitment's not an issue. I don't have a husband, I don't have kids. I have a work schedule that is very accommodating for it. I said, I'm just worried that my heart might not be able to handle it. So far, there's only been one time where I kind of left and like my heart was like, oh. As I was walking out, I happened to lock eyes with one dog who was just looking at me like he wanted to come out of the kennel. But otherwise, it's been good and it's been fun. This eyeshadow is not going on. Take two. <laughs> I didn't like how that look was turning out. Thought I'll just wipe it off and start over. That's one of the things I love about makeup. If you don't like it, you can wash it off and start over. The shimmers just are not good in it. Kiss my ass. So I'm using ones that I know work a little bit better. I watch a lot of YouTube, like a lot of YouTube. And I do enjoy sometimes following the, the drama, the gossip, whatever you want to call it. And now it looks like Tia Simone and Molly Golightly have had some drama. I'm still way behind on all of that, so I'm not exactly sure what happened. I discovered Tia earlier this summer. I've really enjoyed watching her videos. She just seems 
level-headed and professional. Like when she has yelled or gotten upset, from what I've seen, it's always been warranted. She's been nice to people in her comment section. So I've just been really impressed with her. So when I heard that she, something was going on with her and Molly Go Lately, I got snippets from some other people's videos on it, but I'm just like, what is going on? I could have this wrong. It sounds like a police report had come out against Letitia Bias, reporting her to the police as a scammer. I think Molly did a video first saying that the report was fake. And then Tia did a live discussing it, saying that the report was true, but the accusation in it was not a valid accusation. And it does sound like Tia requested the report and got an actual copy of it from the police department. Like I said, from my understanding, I could have that wrong. But then when she was discussing it in a live, apparently Molly was watching and Molly did not agree with that. She made a comment that she was unsubbing. And then I guess they've been going at it. I am a little biased. I do support Tia just because I've watched more of her videos than Molly. Molly's fieriness. I love her East Coast attitude, but I can see why some people don't like it. I don't think Tia has deserved the way that it's gone. That girl has integrity. On YouTube, that's not always there. Apparently, Molly made a thumbnail and it was a picture of one of her Patreon's house. Because I guess when you're a Patreon, have access to people's addresses. So that's how she found the photo, apparently, and used that as a thumbnail. And, uh, that's not cool. It can be scarily easy to find people's addresses nowadays online. I had a guy a few years ago on a dating site. I had just given him my first and last name and I wasn't feeling vibes, but then he wanted to meet up and I just wasn't feeling it. Then I had a message from him where he sent me my address and he said, is this where you live? And I'm like, that's freaky as So I mentioned, they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. Let me fix that thing about blue eyeshadow it can get everywhere i recorded this about a week ago i caught up on a little bit more now i've seen some clips where molly was indicating that tia looked like a man and i saw a clip where she kept calling tia rupaul that is so uncalled for also she was making fun of the makeup that tia wears that also crosses a line i'm a makeup junkie just like tia and it should not matter if somebody wants to wear just mascara or if somebody wants to put eight layers of spackle on their face makeup is subjective i hate it when people judge other people on how they do their makeup or how much makeup they wear it does not matter and maybe you could say I'm biased because when I do a full face, I do a full face. Tia said she wears makeup for herself, not because she needs it or because she's trying to impress others. And I was like, yes, Tia, yes, because that has always been my thoughts on makeup too. Like when people tell me, oh, you don't need to wear makeup. But I'm like, I know that. I wear it because I like it. I blocked my first people. The first was an ex-boyfriend who I have no idea how he found my channel because I don't go by my first and last name and I haven't talked to him in five years. I know I never talked to him about wanting to start my own channel. So it's really creepy how he found it out. The only thing I could think is if he's maybe like Facebook stalking my sister because I think she shares some of my videos on her page, but I'm pretty sure she has him blocked because I've dated some not so good guys. He was probably the worst. So I blocked him. I think it was just like two weeks after that I blocked the second person. I gotta make sure I grab the right foundation. One of them is the palest shade that I use for face painting and the other one matches my skin. Okay. <laughs> the eyeshadow's been a mess. I could totally see me grab the one foundation and you know, just make the whole thing a shit show. Okay, comments don't bother me. I don't delete comments unless they are mean towards other people. I've had a couple on my true crime vids. I think I've mentioned this before, but on my Kyle Rittenhouse vid, this one conversation with this one person, he opened it by calling me a cunt every time. Like, cunt, you don't know what you're talking about. Those are still on my channel like those don't bother me this one crossed the line this person had been uh leaving comments so i knew they didn't like me but then on this one video they left a comment that was uh very very inappropriate i don't want to repeat what they said so i blocked them and then i went to go delete their comment but when you block somebody it must delete all of their comments that they've ever left on your channel my whole reasoning for starting youtube was i wanted to talk to people who had similar interests especially with makeup there's not a lot of people in my real life who like makeup as much as i do one of the good things about the internet is that you can more easily connect with people who have similar interests so i knew going into it i'm like i always want my comment section to be a place where people can talk and voice their opinion even if it's in disagreement to me and i finally gave my 
myself permission to not respond to every comment. It still feels a little rude, like if I just like a comment and don't reply like, oh, thank you or, or something like that. And maybe that's the Midwestern in me. If somebody's taking the time out to not only watch your video, but then also to type out a comment, it feels like I'm ignoring it if I don't like it or comment. Sometimes it is a little hard to keep up with the comments. And so I finally gave myself permission to sometimes just like a comment. <laughs> I'm excited to get back into true crime because that is fascinating. Cases that I've covered, even if it was a case that I had already known a lot about, every time I've sat down to research it a little bit more, I've learned more about it. Earlier this year, I had set up a room in my basement to have like a nice filming area that wasn't a makeup one. Like this is my makeup room. It's just a spare bedroom. But I'm like, I kind of want a space that has like a pretty YouTube background that I could dedicate for like true crime and other videos. I only got like three months use out of it maybe. And then the window in the basement started leaking. My house is old. I think it's about 45 years old. And that window was the original window. So I'm not surprised that it did start leaking. It wasn't too bad. It was just kind of like a trickle down and like the carpet in just that room was getting wet in just certain areas. I'm still friends with one of my exes. And if there's home projects where I don't necessarily want to hire somebody to come in and do, but it's above my skill level, I will pay him to come help me out. If I'm going to need to fix the window and maybe replace it, I thought maybe this is a good opportunity to turn it into an egress window. Because because my goal with this house, I've been trying to fix it up and I'd love to sell it someday and take that equity and build my own house someday. It's a dream. You know, who knows? I could still be living in this house when I'm 85 years old. Egress windows are one of the things you put in your house. It's like, boom, instant equity. But you know, because of the pandemic, everything is kind of slow. Like they just did that two weeks ago. And I had talked to them, I think in May to get stuff lined up and, and just had to wait for them to do it. But I needed something temporary to try to keep it at bay. So my ex came over and he cocked up the window for me, which held up pretty good. Like we had a couple rains and I went down to check and I didn't notice any more water coming in. But then there was one night we got seven inches of rain. I went downstairs to do a Jane Fonda workout because that's another thing I'd like to do. I feel like my mental health has kind of gotten into a better place than it was at the beginning of this year. And I'm like, oh, I really need to get my physical health in shape. But I went down there. I was going to, you know, I was in my workout clothes, but I'm like, I'll just check to see if it held up with all that rain that we got. I didn't even walk into the room. I was out in the hallway and took one step and it went crush and I was like oh f it was a mess down there. So instead of doing a Jane Fonda workout video, I spent the time tearing up some of the carpet, rolling up some of the carpet parts that I didn't cut up and pull up. I tried to just like peel back so I could get air underneath there, set up fans. It was a mess. It wasn't like standing water where it was like inches of water in the basement. Really just the carpet was pretty soaked. When I pulled the carpet back, there was like a little layer of water on there, but it still, it, it could have been worse. Everything's been kind of a mess down there until just now. I moved stuff back into the room, put my setup back. I started watching the Netflix series on Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm only on the third episode. It's pretty good so far. I know there's controversy with it because they're saying that the victim's families it's just bringing back more memories for them. But I think there's always controversy anytime anybody talks about true crime. And in some ways it can be disrespectful. I know I made a whole video on this, but I'm not a huge fan of like the, the true crime and makeup videos. And I will make jokes here and there in mine. I love to joke around, but when it comes to the true crime stuff, I just, it doesn't feel right to put in a whole bunch of jokes. I have been enjoying it. And oh my gosh, the actor who is playing Jeffrey Dahmer sounds exactly like him. He said his first sentence and I was like, you have that Wisconsin accent down, buddy. But when you listen to Jeffrey Dahmer and listen to this guy, it's like the kind of mumbled, soft-spoken speech. He nailed it. In the Midwest, you know, we obviously overpronounce our vowels. It seems like one way you can tell a Wisconsin accent different from a Minnesota accent is Wisconsin seems to emphasize the A more like Packers. On Minnesota, we seem to emphasize the O's more like Tuesday, snow. I think I talked about everything I wanted to talk about. Thank you so much for watching watching and listening. I'll see you next time. Bye.